Burson Park has been home to Middlesbrough Football Club since 1903. It is part of Teesside folklore, the stage on which for many dreams are woven amidst the debris of industrial and economic decay. The platform upon which for 90 minutes a week the locals can find escapism from the drudgery of life. The borough might not have achieved much in the form of championships and cups. For most of its 91 years of Football League activity, it has hovered between Division 1 and Division 2. But its contribution to life on Teesside has been immense. Every August, about this time, there is the tingle of excitement as the new season dawns. The recruitment of Robbie Musto, John Henry and John Walk suggests that this is the strongest squad for some time. The quest for glory opens against West Ham United. Great ball from Walk and a shot coming in for Slaven brilliantly pushed over by McCloskoe. Bernie Slaven, 32 goals he got last season. And he fires in the first real shot of this match. No sooner has the league season started than it is into the hurly burly of KO football and the Rumblows League Cup. Third Division Tranmere Rovers are the visitors to Ayrson Park. A touch of Bernie Slaven magic almost creating the opening goal. Borough's first strike of the season is to come from an unexpected source. Tony Mowbray leaping to head in John Walk's well-directed free kick. A superbly struck free kick by Steve Vickers gives Tranmere an unexpected reprieve to set up an intriguing second leg. But it was hardly what Borough fans had wanted. At home park, Bernie Slaven opens his account for the season with this perfectly executed finish, right on the stroke of half-time. But Borough's first win of the season escapes them on the hour, when Thomas's free kick leaves the defence in tatters. from Robbie Musto and Bernie Slaven seal victory over Tranmere Rovers to set up a second round derby clash with Newcastle United. Back in Division 2, the agility of Steve Pears keeps Borough in the game against Notts County. But who makes contact here? Tony Mowbray's claim for another corner seems well founded. In the second half, a post comes to Borough's aid. And if your luck's in, it's most certainly in, as John Walk aptly demonstrates at the other end. Still, they all count, and Walkie laps up the applause in traditional style. But how about this for a free kick? Steve Cherry makes a brilliant save to deny Martin Russell. It's Cherry again who proves a stumbling block as Stuart Ripley shrugs off all attempts to haul him back. But Borough have done enough. John Walk's goal sealing the first league win of the season. A week later and Borough's unbeaten start in the league continued with a 3-1 win at Swindon. But it wasn't all Borough. Swindon had a great first half. This is superb save from Stephen Pears. Pears doing well there to dive away to his right ball coming in and another superb save there from the borough keeper and it really was Steve Pears against Swindon in the first half this another superb save full stretch diving to his right and making sure that he uh, kept the ball having done all the hard work but actually at the other end Bernie Slaven this time going close for uh, Borough good save there by Fraser Digby and off the line by a fellow Swindon defender Good work again by Swindon. And there's Duncan Shearer putting Swindon in front after 27 minutes. And here's Fitzroy Simpson again. Shot coming back off the post. Oh, Shearer. So close to giving Swindon a two-goal advantage. But Borough came back with a vengeance. This is their first. Bernie Slaven poking it in from close range after 51 minutes. Swindle on the attack again. Borough 
outnumbered at the back. Oh, and Steve Pearce, grateful to see that one go past the uh, far post. Borough back on the attack. Here's Robbie Musto inside the box. Oh, a nice turn from him, and that's goal number two for the Borough. And Musto's delighted. Good tackles there on the edge of the swimming area as the home side come close again. Another good save from Steve Pears. Well, that's a terrible back pass from Steve Foley. Slaven won't miss from there. Surely, no, he doesn't. A terrible back pass by Swindon Steve Foley. Slaven in the box, unmarked. Where is it in the back of the net? It's Swindon 1, Middlesbrough 3. Borough's best performance of the season so far lifts them to seventh place in the second division table. But the bubble bursts at Port Vale, where three goals in the last 18 minutes inflicts a first defeat of the season after Martin Russell had given Borough a 19th minute lead. Ayrson Park fans are anxious to know how their team will respond against table topping Oldham Athletic. The signs are encouraging good passing and intelligent support off the ball, setting up Ian Baird. And Bernie Slaven doesn't usually squander opportunities like this one. Add to that some fine goalkeeping by John Hallworth and Borough are denied the finish to match their endeavours. But Latic's greatest ever scorer, Roger Palmer, needs only a half chance to show his phenomenal ability. It's the goal which clinches the points that even the acrobatics of Mowbray and Walk cannot eclipse. Final score, Middlesbrough nil, Oldham Athletic 1. Borough now trail the leaders by 11 points. Back in the Rumlows League Cup, there is the added spice of Newcastle United. The pressure is on to establish a first leg advantage, but it is the Geordies who almost take the lead. Robbie Musto emerges as the hero of the night, ghosting in unheeded to snap up the first of his two goals in the 26th minute. His second comes just over the hour. It's taken with the coolness of a true striker. After some fancy footwork by Stuart Ripley. They'll be drowning their sorrows on Tyneside this night. In terms of promotion, it is important for Borough to get back to winning ways in Division 2. Leicester, with only one win to their credit and a defence that has shipped 18 goals, must not be allowed to turn the corner at Ayrson Park. It takes just six minutes for Jimmy Phillips to register his first goal of the season. Ian Hendry's cross perfectly weighted. <laughs> Hendry decides to do it himself this time. The shot beating Hooper at his near post in the 42nd minute. This triggers an amazing three-minute sequence. As Borough gained the freedom of Ayrson Park, Paul Kerr making it 3-0 in the 44th minute. And Bernie Slaven doing it as only he can in the 45th. Leicester never recover from this mauling. Hooper, on loan from Liverpool, seeming in two minds whether to use his foot or his hand as Ian Baird fires in number five. The Leicester defenders are merely going through the motions now. It's Hendry again forging down the right. Paul Kerr arriving to knock the Foxes for six. Only goal difference separates the T-siders from the Tyne-siders as they clash for the first time in the league this season. 
the Borough lads seem in generous mood, but Kevin Brock doesn't take advantage. Tidy build up from Newcastle, but Quinn can't find the way through. Stephen Pears on top form when Brock does hit the target. which is supplemented by a further three at bottom of the table Watford, where Mowbray and Baird are on target. Borough are now nicely placed eighth in the second division table. It's north to St James's Park to conclude the Rumblows League Cup tie, and what a thriller unfolds. Steve Pears makes this early save, and when Jimmy Phillips loses his way, it spells trouble for his colleagues. Wayne Faraday making the running and providing the cross. Aitken playing it back. And the finish from John Anderson with a little help from Alan Kernigan. 1 0 to Newcastle on the night, 2 1 to Borough on aggregate. A delightful interchange sets Phillips away. His cross is perfect. Ian Baird shot at full stretch, beating John Burridge, who seems more than a little confused. That one was under the bar, but this one from Christensen is way over. Newcastle throw everything forward in a desperate effort to level the score. But when they do hit the target, they find Steve Pears unbeatable. Borough are through to a home tie with First Division Norwich City. The return of former manager Bruce Rio with Millwall creates a lot of interest. Still very popular with the Teesside fans, he is given an enthusiastic reception. The same hospitality is not afforded his team, however. Bernie Slaven unhinging the Lions in the 55th minute. This a textbook move, Slaven laying the ball off, then continuing his run to create another option, which he exploits to maximum effect. Alex Ray stabbing the cross past his own goalkeeper on his Football League debut. The applause has hardly died down when John Hendry turns on his party piece. He runs three quarters the length of the field, taking four opponents out of the game before slotting his shot past Horn. Alex Ray somewhat atones for his misfortune when he chests down this clearance from John Walk and shoots. The ball deflecting past pairs. Borough have moved into sixth place, a full ten points ahead of visiting Bristol Rovers, who have a couple of shocks in store for their off-key hosts. The long legs of White catch Mowbray out. Pears coming to his rescue with a fine save. The lanky Devon White is proving a handful. We're not sure if Steve Pears is practicing for the Panto or has invented a new game. Whatever it is, he seems to be enjoying it. We are 30 minutes into the game when Ian Baird meets Cooper's long kick. His knockdown is perfect. Paul Kerr's finish unstoppable.
but when Burroughs' defence goes walkabout, White just hangs around. And when he gets what he was looking for, he makes it look like a Friday morning warm-up session. Paul Kerr tries to regain the initiative. His cross flicked on by Ian Baird, but Robbie Musto is left flat on his back. Borough are literally bounced out of this game. Kernigan and Mowbray left for dead. Pears pulling down Pounder. Holloway is the man charged with a spot kick. And he makes no mistake. John Henry has his moments. Yates rides his luck. While at the other end, Rovers continue to embarrass the Borough defence. Middlesbrough 1, Bristol Rovers 2. This defeat, and another suffered at Molyneux, loses ground in the race for Division 1. It's Bernie Slaven who keeps Borough in touch with the leaders with a brilliant hat-trick at Brighton. We're in the ninth minute as Baird crosses, Slaven picks his spot, McKenna has it, now he hasn't. 1-0, Borough. Bernie is given the freedom of Brighton Beach here. It's the sort of chance he can take with his eyes closed. But how about this for a towering header? Wilkins putting the Seagulls back in contention. That square back line is sprung again. Ian Baird coolly slotting in his fourth goal of the season. Steve Pear seems to have made a great save, but Small thunders the ball back before he can recover his poise. It's 3-2 Burrow in case you are confused, and Slaven hasn't yet finished his day. His hat-trick completed in the 85th minute. Bernie Slaven has no peer at Brighton. There is nothing like a good giant killing act to stir the heart, and the Ayrson Park faithful are overjoyed when Paul Kerr almost apologetically turns this clumsy error into a golden goal. The Canaries spend most of the night chasing shadows. Scottish goalkeeper Brian Gunn saving this one. But sit back and enjoy the next nine seconds. There have been few greater goals than this one from John Henry at Ayrson Park. In the second half, Borough continued to dictate the game. to this one, but it really wasn't Norwich's night. Borough are into round four. The promotion battle with Barnsley is settled in the fourth minute. Some woolly defending, great hustling by Kerr. And the Tykes are one down. Whose goal is it? Paul Kerr's. Mel Machen's side run out of luck here. But it seems Borough are in a benevolent frame of mind. Pity for Barnsley that Steve Pears is not as charitable. Paul Kerr, then Ian Baird, show some old-fashioned skills. But there is no further score. It's Middlesbrough 1, Barnsley 0. Bernie Slaven's eighth goal of the season rounds off some impressive approach work at the Hawthorns. coming just two minutes from time. A 
At home to Charlton Athletic, there is an early setback. Tony Mowbray losing his balance as he tries to clear Lee's shot. In the second half, Alan Kernigan finds Stuart Ripley with a penetrative through ball. The substitute's cross is well directed, but the header flashes wide. There is no mistake when Ian Baird sees the whites of the goalposts. His aim from 12 yards is straight and true. With only six minutes left, it seems Borough have salvaged a point. But a minute from time, this happens. Referee Lunt awards a penalty, and 10-man Charlton go 2-1 ahead from Tommy Caton's conversion. Despite this setback, Borough are still fourth, and at Fratton Park, they put on a championship show. An amazing leap from Baird, thwarted by an instinctive save from Gosney, but Bernie Slaven is on cue for the opening goal just before the break. Baird, once a hero here at Fratton Park, needs no assistance for the second. And Pompey's demise is further heightened when Stevens deflects John Hendry's effort into his own net. Zenith Data Systems Cup tie with Hull City produces four goals. But there are only near misses to talk about over the half-time Bovril. It's Ian Baird who breaks the deadlock. The six-foot striker with the traditional style, timing his jump to perfection. Bernie Slaven seems dejected when he fails to make the most of Ripley's eventual cross. It's a moment that becomes exaggerated when Waits heads Hull City level. But these Tigers keep their claws firmly on the ground and Tony Mowbray makes them pay with this well-directed header. Now, Bernie Slaven has netted many impudent goals, but how about this for rubbing salt into the Tigers' wounds? It's Middlesbrough 3, Hull City 1. If you thought that was a goal feast, then sit down for a veritable banquet. It takes just three minutes for the fun to start. Ian Baird soaring to head in John Walk's clip-free kick. Ten minutes later, Jimmy Phillips' cross seems easy meat for Paul Key, but the Oxford custodian has a touch of butterfingers, and Bernie Slaven helps himself. Spurred on by skipper Steve Foster, Oxford fight back. Nogan finds Steen, whose shot hits the net. And the U's aren't finished. Lee Nogan solo providing a worthy equaliser in the 33rd minute. When Baird is hauled down in the box in the 63rd minute, he takes the penalty himself. 3-2, Borough. Baird turns provider again. With this cross, Robbie Musto on the end of it to sweep in goal number four. Bernie Slaven seems set to shoot when Robinson intervenes. There's a change in approach and a change in direction as Ian Baird nets. Only his second ever career hat-trick. The cup run comes to grief at Villa Park, where Bernie Slaven scores twice in the last four minutes of the game. Hull City are back, 
this time to contest league points. And once again, they find the going tough. Though as before, they keep Borough at bay during a goalless first half. John Walk instigates this 53rd minute attack, bringing Cooper and Hendry into play. Cooper gets in the cross. And Kerr's header spells trouble for the keeper, who is powerless to deal with Ian Baird's final follow-up. His 11th goal of the season. The Tigers can only stand and stare at this clinical precision. Mowbray's throw, Ripley's header, and Slaven's scintillating execution. Hull's response is more a token gesture. It's Borough who show their claws. There are shades of George Best in the way Slaven dummies and drags this ball wide. Paul Kerr stealing the thunder as he homes in to score. Middlesbrough 3, Hull City nil, and so to Upton Park for a top of the table clash. Slaven's cross, headed away by Mowbray. Breaker out to Key. Oh, McAvenny, oh, magnificent! Dave, uh, McAvenny's header. It looked like it was going in, and Stephen Pears rose to the occasion. Gale getting his head to it, oh, and McAvenny was in there. West Ham United nil, Middlesbrough nil, perhaps a predictable scoreline, but a moral-boosting one too. The Zenith Data Systems Cup run flounders at Main Road, but Borough have a far more important date with Blackburn Rovers. When Cooper gives this ball away, it proves disastrous. Walk, Coleman and Mowbray all making feeble attempts to stop the Rovers' advance. And it is who blasts home the penalty. Further indecisive defending nearly proves costly. While at the other end, Coleman could perhaps have done better. Ian Baird draws the best out of the Blackburn goalkeeper. And it seems Borough's destiny is confirmed when Slaven meets Ripley's cross. The bar left vibrating from the impact. So the last home game of 1990 ends in defeat, but Borough gains some recompense with all three points at Portman Road on Boxing Day, keeping them very much in the hunt for Division One. Alas, Borough bow out of 1990 with a 3-0 defeat at Ashton Gate ringing in their ears. There couldn't be a tougher opening to the new year, and it's Sheffield Wednesday's Hurst and Williams who burst into 1991 with typical flourish. A slow, deliberate build-up, but when David Hurst spins off Mowbray, Stephen Pears is left grabbing thin air. In the second half, Wednesday continue to call the shots. Only pairs preventing them extending their lead. But in the 75th minute, this corner spells the end. Paul Williams striking from close range. Sheffield Wednesday have opened a daunting six-point gap over Middlesbrough. The tensions of the league are exchanged for the excitement of the cup. 
Borough enjoy most of the play against an Argyle side 15 places below them in the second division table, but are struggling to find the net. wasted opportunity here reflecting Borough's predicament just one goal in five games is simply not good enough for a side of Middlesbrough's potential a week later Plymouth are back again in the league Borough show one change Putney replacing Proctor but the outcome is the same as before Borough carve out the openings Paul Kerr doing everything right this time but is thwarted by the covering burrows. Even this curler from Trevor Putney drifts wide of the target. And in the second half, luck holds good for the Mariners. It's two lost points, but Burrows still hold on to fifth place. Three points ahead of Millwall, two short of Knox County. This is the third meeting with the Pilgrims in 14 days. If familiarity breeds contempt, then it is not evident here. Ten minutes into the game, Phillips swings in a fourth corner. Mowbray gets a touch and Ian Baird nips in to score. It is Borough's first goal since Boxing Day. This is only Argyle's second attack in the 27th minute. Adcock going down as Mowbray challenges. Nicky Marker equalising from the spot. It is Paul Kerr who grabs the injury time winner after Baird has done the spade work to earn a fourth round tie at Cambridge United. A keenly contested match at Meadow Lane lives up to its billing as a thriller unfolds. Quick thinking by John Walk and Baird is in to steal the lead in the 10th minute. But it is an error of judgment by Steve Pears which hands County the equaliser. The referee's raised arm clearly indicating an indirect free kick. Draper is indeed fortunate. Slaven's persistence and cross, and Steve Cherry hands it to Stuart Ripley. 2-1 Borough. But this is a resilient county side, and a quick break opens the way for Regis to level again on the stroke of half-time. Baird is on the spot after Thomas had upended Henry. But oh dear, this is just how not to do it. It is an error for which Johnson makes him pay dearly. Regis winning the first ball, Johnson wrong-footing his minders. It's Notts County 3, Middlesbrough 2. The realities of life are directly brought home at the Abbey Stadium, where goals from John Taylor destroy Borough's Cup dream. They need to get that disappointment out of the system against a Swindon Town side unbeaten in their last ten games. Two goals in four minutes settles the issue. The first in the 32nd minute, a textbook move with Jimmy Phillips providing the cross and Robbie Musto the perfectly judged lob. A ball bent in behind the Swindon rear guard sets up Bernie Slaven for number two. And it could have been more. Tony Mowbray shooting across the face of the goal. Borough are well in command, and only Fraser Digby denies Slaven his 16th goal of the season. <laughs> Slaven.
Slaven's majestic skills are to the fore again here. And when Swindon do get in an attack, they find Steve Pears is in fine form. Middlesbrough 2, Swindon Town 0. There is still no change in the table. Borough trading third place Sheffield Wednesday by seven points. Framed by the winter snow, Borough warmed to their task against West Bromwich Albion. Slaven deflecting Colin Walsh's shot in classical goal coaching style. There is an air of disbelief about Bannister's equaliser. The crowd's response as chilly as the bitter northeast wind. And when he fires Albion into the lead four minutes later, Borough's pride is badly dented. Inevitably, Jimmy Phillips is involved in Borough's comeback. Robbie Musto showing how it should be done. But how about this for an 87th minute winner? Melvin Reese trying desperately to hide his embarrassment with a hollow protest. He does get the better of Slaven in the final rally. But the night belongs to Borough, who now head for Selhurst Park. And have been penned in their own half by this Middlesbrough team, who certainly look like they've got more of an appetite for the points this afternoon. As Slavin goes forward, this is a good chance now for Borough and take the lead, and Slavin makes it number one for Middlesbrough. That makes it three straight wins in February, lifting Borough to fourth place. Just a point now adrift of Sheffield Wednesday. Consistency is the name of the game, as they take on Portsmouth, who have not won at Ayrson Park since 1949. But when Whittingham is allowed to run, Warren Aspinall finds room to collect and shoot past on loan goalkeeper Andy Dibble with the help of a deflection off Parkinson. His congratulations for his sixth goal of the season. Walk, Musto and Walsh are all involved here, but it seems a somewhat harsh decision when referee Tom Fitzharris rules that Martin Cool has charged down Ripley's superbly struck volley. Still, Gary Parkinson is not completing. 1-1. One, one. Fitzharris makes another controversial penalty award when Walk and Whittingham tangle. Martin Cool seizing the initiative to impose his own kind of justice. Middlesbrough 1, Portsmouth 2. No goals at Boothbury Park, but Sheffield Wednesday, 2-0 winners at Notts County, ease into a three-point lead. Borough are looking for the double over struggling Oxford, but some accomplished goalkeeping and the bar shut them out. Oxford too have their moments. But neither side can find the net. Exciting run from 
and Stuart Ripley. The final score, Middlesbrough nil, Oxford United nil. Newcastle arrived for their first league game at Ayrson Park since the final fixture of the previous season, when Borough upset the form book to win 4-1. It's going to be interesting on this free kick to see if they leave the space in front of Baird as they did on the last one. Uh, he was looking to get into feet and Moby did put, uh, put a particularly good ball in. But there was a lot of space and they're looking forward to the game there. They can react as well. Looks for the free kick. That's a great header. Oh, it's got in and Slater looks to be claiming it. Mowbray was up there. But Slater is celebrating too. Middlesbrough struck out of nowhere. The ball was played in. Ripley might get a second crack at this one. He's to take it out wide to get the room for his cross. He's got it in. Slaven's there, Baird, it was just behind him. Walsh comes in. It's 2 0. Colin Walsh picked up the pieces there. Square for Christensen to try one. And a great effort too, well saved by Tibble. Costo. McGee spotted the gap there and they found him well. Bears and Slaven. Great save by Farage. Here comes the corner. And guess who was there? Tony Mowbray again. Now there could be a break on for Middlesbrough. Walsh is through the middle. Slaven is out wide, Putney is still going, here comes Slaven, what's he going to do from here? Still with Slaven, and again Slaven brings the best out of Burridge. And here comes Ripley again. Costo, Slaven, Baird, all ahead of him, still with Ripley. Nielsen, Ripley, it's there again, 3-0. This really has, Dennis, been an emphatic performance by Middlesbrough to do their promotion, hopes a power of good. And Brian trying to get in there and just pass the post. But it only would have been a consolation, really, for them. Middlesbrough 3, Newcastle United 0, a scoreline that lifts the hearts of all T-siders. Now to Filbert Street. Baird. Walsh. Swept in. Away by James. Walsh will do it again. Putney. First time shot. Oh, a tremendous goal! I think just for a split second, Trevor Putney didn't realise that it had gone in. Phillips hits it. Oh, it's there! Right again. James with a header. It's there! Tapped in! This time by David Oldfield. Leicester 1, Middlesbrough 2. Gibson. Russell. Some good close control. Little flick on. Walsh with a shot! Oh, it's number 2! A magnificent goal from Steve Walsh. And so the free kick, as you can see, just a couple of yards or inches, in it comes. James with the header! It's in! I don't believe it! Musto. To McGee. He's got Ripley wide. Back to McGee. Still has it. Tries the shot. Takes a deflection! Oh, my goodness me! McGee. Oh, a bad ball straight to young Russell. He's clipped it in, he's done it! Oh, what a debut! What a thriller, but no points. Now Borough need to win at Millwall. Played forward by Thompson. Ray getting the... It was good when they got it across. And a snap. Ray there by Millwall, forces the corner. 
Goodman did well, got down the uh, outside, played the ball across, and uh, a frantic scramble to get it away. Stevenson with the corner. Oh, it's there! Thompson! Thompson has scored! A free kick there. Sheringham trying to get a touch, did it? Oh, it's there! A brilliant goal! Middlesbrough thought they cleared it. Mowbray's header. Kerr. This is Phillips. Chance here to get the ball in dangerously, and he does. Oh, it's chance here, and it's the substitute who scores. Paul Kerr puts Middlesbrough back into this uh, game. Chance here. Oh, great save. Ray was the man who got in behind them. John Walk tries the shot. Oh, oh and Brannigan's made a hash of it, and it's there. Oh, my word. A goal out of the blue from John Walk. He must have hit it from 35 yards. And I doubt whether he scored uh, many goals like that before. So Brannigan's gift keeps Borough in contention. But they need to take maximum points from bottom club Watford. James, the Hornets number one, proves difficult to beat, however. Frustration begins to show. Ian Baird losing his composure to waste a chance he would normally devour. And so it went on. Phillips desperately unfortunate with this worthy effort. It's the 77th minute when Baird out jumps Rhoda, the former Newcastle defender. He plows on, stumbles, but still manages to flick the ball in. It seems the battle is won. But when Porter hammers home this free kick in the 82nd minute, the complexion is changed. And Borough's promotion aspirations nosedive when in the final minute, substitute David Byrne casually wraps in a winner. Watford's first victory in 13 games. Ipswich skipper David Linnigan strikes a brilliant goal in the 14th minute on his return to his native North East. It could have been worse. Goddard and Stockwell combining neatly, the former Magpie striker hitting the bar. But Tony Mowbray is not to be outdone. From Jimmy Phillips' free kick, he heads over a stranded Craig Forrest. When Slaven slots Baird in, there is almost a dramatic winner. But with more points dropped, a top three place seems further out of reach. The playoffs now seem the more realistic option as Borough arrive at Ewood Park. Cluster of players over the far side, hit straight to Lee Richardson, who clears it first time. Yeah, again, Tony Mowbray towering above everyone, but... Nick Duxbury's ball puts Jason Wilcox away. Edge of the box, shooting to the far side. And it brings a superb save out of Andy Dibble. And Middlesbrough come forward down the left. 
through John Hendry. They lose the defenders, gets the cross in, Bernie Slavin. And what an absolutely brilliant save by Bobby Mims, who are playing this afternoon, as this ball finds its way through. And then again, Bobby Mims. Plenty of energy for a big man, but loses out to John Miller. Richardson with the cross, Irvine into the box, headed away by Simon Coleman. Irvine with a second chance. Shenstone beats him to it! A diving header past Andy Dibble. And Middlesbrough play the penalty for some sloppy defensive work. Borough are still hanging on in there. Six now, just above Bristol City on goal difference. The significance of this clash does not need to be underlined. Andy Dibble misjudges this cross, then loses his footing. Mark Burrow slipping out of the playoff positions as well. With just two minutes gone, Bristol City certainly thinks so. Stuart Ripley hauls Butter back on terms in the 23rd minute. Slaven goes close. Dibble is called upon to keep City at bay. In the end, it is the powerful running of Ripley which proves decisive. His winner coming in the 90th minute. As the action hots up against Port Vale, Borough rely on that old combination. Ripley delivering the perfect cross, Ian Baird producing the spectacular diving header. needs no assistance as he notches number two in the 49th minute. And what a night for Martin Russell, deferred to Bernie Slaven, who marks his first start in six months with this opportunist effort. Ripley again produces the cross for John Walk to complete the route. A result which leaves Colin Todd's side just two points behind third place Sheffield Wednesday. The moment of truth at Hillsborough is watched by over 30,000 fans. Borough collapsing to two Paul Williams goals in the last six minutes. We'll pick out Saunders with that ball though. Jeff Twentyman there plays that ball back to Dibble. Saunders. And a penalty! Rovers have a penalty. The ball flicked menacingly on the tricky surface. Leicester Schachter had no doubts about that one at all. Saunders against Dibble then for Rovers. Here it is. 1-0. It is in there. Rovers are in the lead. You can see the corner kick. Rovers going for this second goal then. 1-0 they lead. They can gain three points on Bristol City. They will be just three points behind them tonight. Will they nip in to top of the West Country pack, we shall see. There's the ball, comes in, 20 percent Oh, I say, Bailey has done it! 2-0 Rovers, what a beautiful goal! 20 men completed all the spade work, he will be so happy with that. 
while Rovers extended their record to 396 minutes since they last conceded a goal, Colin Todd's priority is to spark his attack against Wolves, who have not won in six games. It takes 11 minutes to break the famine. Borough's precision play on the left, forcing Hindmarsh into error. Stuart Ripley coolly turning the half chance into a goal. Dibble looks sound in the home goal. And Bernie Slaven teases Bartram with this effort. But when John Henry wraps it up from close range, Borra are back in business. Middlesbrough 2, Wolverhampton Wanderers 0. Just three games to go. Borra a seventh, but it's not over yet. Oldham have already won their ticket into Division 1, and they celebrate in style. Marshall forcing the first over the line after just four minutes. <laughs> Ian Baird is extremely unlucky to see this shot strike the post. You need better breaks than this on the Latics notorious plastic. Marshall turns provider as the ball bobbles off Dibble, allowing Holden to shoot. And the Borough goalkeeper so close to making the block. But the false footing breeds uncertainty in Borough's defence, and Oldham are quick to respond to the slightest error. At the other end, the visitors are restricted to the occasional long shot. But Borough are learning. It is difficult to kill the ball on this surface. Quick reactions to rebounds can be rewarding. Final score, Oldham 2, Middlesbrough 0. Borough had already disposed of Brighton in the last home game of the season. Ripley is full of confidence, while Borough's play continues to be neat and tidy. letting fly at the conclusion of this move. The game swings Borough's way from Ripley's corner. Simon Coleman's header, his first goal of the season in the 64th minute. John Crumpling is the Brighton man all at sea here. Ripley has it, now he doesn't, but oh yes he does, it's Middlesbrough 2, Brighton 0.
The playoff dream is over for Barnsley despite this victory. Gotta squeezing them out on goal difference. And so to the climax, and Borough are at home for the first leg against Notts County. Well, Hendry, plenty of defenders ahead of him, swings that one in, and Slaven couldn't stretch. But that was a dangerous ball in from Hendry, and Bernie Slaven in a typical position there. Cooper, using the left foot there, Baird, Slaven looking to get onto this one. A bounce, cruel to him, a Reardon sweeping behind. Ripley could pressure this. Proctor Baird was coming in. It's Cooper rampaging forward now. Ripley is out wide. Here's the provider. He's looking to get the cross in and he does as well. And Slaven, just the wrong side of the upright. That's the sort of service though that Bernie Slaven wants. Coleman. Another one for him to deal with. Hendry. Not back in again. And that's the lead for Knox County. It's Turner. Again, another free kick. With us, uh, we have to do something for these dead ball kicks. Turner had to swing it in. No Gray, the skipper's up there. Returning and Slaven is it in? It's in. Phillips might have got the last touch. The Borough are level. So Jim Phillips provides a lifeline. The Teesiders, who it must be said, never look convincing are in with a fighting chance. But though they have reserved some of their best performances for away games, Paul Harding settles a tense encounter with the goal that takes County to Wembley and leaves Borough floored. For men like Bernie Slaven, John Hendry, Stuart Ripley, Robbie Musto, Ian Baird and Jimmy Phillips, it has been an emotional drain. Young athletes primed to joust and shattered, gutted by the stark emptiness of failure tormented by the cruelness of a game that has no place for losers. It hurts when all that one has striven for over 48 gruelling games escapes you in the final furlong. Ian Baird and his colleagues will live to fight another day, but they'll always remember the pain of these ruptured dreams.